Okay, today I am going to show you why you should consider using negative hit points and unconsciousness in your D&D campaign. And we're going to be looking at three rule books that, uh, that discuss what their rules are. This is the original, well, one of the original basic D&D books uh, written by Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson. These are PDFs. You can look these up online very, very easily. Here is the uh, Advanced Dungeon Master's Guide, Advanced D&D, again, um, on PDF. And here is the 5th edition Player's Handbook. And I'm just showing you this is just a, a PDF. Okay. In basic D&D, zero is death. I'm going to just show you. It's on page 6. Hit points represent the number of points of damage. Character, any creature reduced to zero points or less is dead. That's the rule for basic D&D. I think the reason they did this was, there was there's no reason to get into a more in-depth approach regarding negative hit points and unconsciousness. This is a perfectly fine system. The problem, it might actually be the best system of D&D. My only issue with it is it's, it's too restrictive and it's not... It, it, negative hit points and unconsciousness allows an element to your campaign that, that, that you don't get with basic. Now, you do get it in first edition, but the rule is a little bizarre, and I'm going to read it to you. Now, we followed this rule to a point, but not entirely, and I didn't even realize this was the rule until I looked it up today. Zero hit points. This is first edition. When any creature is brought to zero hit points, optionally as low as negative three, I didn't know that was the case, uh, th negative three hit points, if from the same blow, it is unconscious. In each of the next succeeding rounds, one additional negative point will be lost until negative 10 is reached and the creature dies. And that's what we did. When you, when you were knocked unconscious, your character is dying. They're going to lose one point until they die in, when they reach negative 10, unless somebody binds their wounds or casts a cure light or something, something that stabilizes them. The moment that's done, they won't die. And then they'll start to gain one point. We What we did was every 24 hours or eight hours, I forget what we did, you get one hit point back. But you can start curing them and they'll get their, they'll get their points back. Now, what we said, once you were brought to positive hit points, you needed to rest for 24 hours. This rule is bizarre. Uh, any character brought to zero or fewer hit points and then revived, so now they're back at positive, will remain in a coma for one to six turns. A turn is 10 minutes. Thereafter, they must rest for a full week minimum. And now, maybe that's realistic. If somebody's been knocked unconscious, they're going to be laid up for a week. But seriously, a, a full week? You, you can't do anything? I mean, you're, you're in a world where people cast cure light wounds... You know, cure serious wounds, cure critical wounds. He, you know, there's all kinds of things. There's potions. Um, I'm, I'm having a hard time believing that your character has is can't do anything for an entire week. We did either eight hours of rest or, or 24 hours because you can you can then cure them. I just I don't I don't I thought this was a little odd. But let's look at what fifth edition says. This is a most. Oh wait, let me go to this one. Here's the page. This is page 197, I think. Dropping to zero hit points. When you drop to zero hit points, you either die outright or fall unconscious. Massive damage can kill you instantly. Um, basically, if you're a cleric and you have 12 hit points, you're currently at six, you take 18 points of damage, you're reduced to zero hit points. But 12 damage remains. Because the remaining damage equals her hit point maximum, the cleric dies. So if you have... 12 hit points. At any point, if you're reduced to negative 12 or more, you're dead. But when you go up levels, those hit points go up. So if you have 50 hit points, according to 5th edition, no hit will kill you unless it drops you to negative 50. <laughs> That's the 5th edition rule, okay? I, I, I What? Uh, um, and if I didn't read that right, when damage reduces you to zero hit points and there is damage remaining... You die if the remaining damage equals or exceeds your hit point maximum. So when you go up levels, and you go up levels fast in 5th fifth, in fifth edition, you're never going to die from massive damage. That's just never going to happen. Um, 
So falling unconscious. So they do deal with unconsciousness, but they don't actually deal with negative hit points other than to say if you're reduced to a negative beyond your maximum. That's all they say. If damage reduces you to, to zero hit points and fails to kill you, you fall unconscious. This unconsciousness ends if you regain any hit points. Okay, so let's go up here. Death saving throws. Whenever you start your turn with zero hit points, you must make a special saving throw called a death saving throw to determine whether you creep closer to death or hang on to life. Now, I like that. Are you creeping closer to death or are you stabilizing? I like that. That's what I'm going to be using, but not death. they're not really death saving throws. Okay, unlike other saving throws, this is intended ability score, you need to roll a 10 or higher, and then you succeed, otherwise you fail. A success or failure doesn't have any effect on its own. On your third success, you become stable. On your third failure, you die. And these are not these are cumulative. So let's say you 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 make your first saving throw, your death save, and you fail once. So now you've succeeded once, you failed once. You succeed again. You 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 have two now. Oh, but you failed. So now you have two. The next the first one that comes to three, success or failure determines whether you live or die. They don't need to be consecutive. Keep, keep track until you collect three of a kind. The number of both is reset to zero when you regain any hit points or become stable. Then there's things about rolling ones or twenties and things like that. Um, but here's the problem with this system. In fifth edition, there are so many advantages and so many modifiers. You only need to roll a 10, first of all. So it's already, you already have better than a 50% chance of, of surviving. But there are so many modifiers in the in this edition that the odds are you're not going to die. You really don't have any. It's just, it's just not going to happen. So you can't die from massive death once your, your hit points are 20, 30 points because you've got to be knocked down to negatives equivalent to your max hit points. And when you're when you're knocked below zero, all you have to do is make three death saves which is really easy because of all the modifiers and all of your feats and things that you can add to the roll. It's virtually impossible. No wonder nobody dies in this game. And it, it's just silly. It's a silly system. Okay. So in my opinion, the basic rule is very difficult, very brutal, but I understand it. First edition is interesting. Um, but I I don't I don't think it's the be the best way to do it. Uh, let me show you what the best way, in my opinion, is. Now this is just three scenarios where a person with six hit points, and I chose six because I think that's the what a uh, wizard starts out with in fifth edition. You get you have six hit points. So if you take six points of damage, you're at zero. If he takes nine points of damage, he's at negative three. Takes thirteen points of damage, he's now at negative seven. According to basic D and D, let me see if I can bring these up a little bit here. Okay, I can do one more. No, whoops. <laughs> okay. All right. In basic D and D, all three characters are dead. In A D and D, the first two characters who are hit the neg zero or negative three will lose one hit point per round until they die. They are going to die 100% chance unless someone binds their wounds, and then they are not going to die 100% chance. That's where I, I have a problem. But it's it's I think this is the best of these three rules. I think this is the best. Um, and then, of course, there's the coma and the rest for a week. And the third character apparently is dead because they were knocked to negative seven. It doesn't actually specifically say that, in the rule that I just read to you, but that's what it appears to be. We didn't do that. And then in fifth edition, you have all of your death saves and which translation, you're not going to die unless you just roll horribly and you have no abilities. It's just, you know, it'd be ridiculous. So let me explain to you why, in my opinion, unconsciousness and negative hit points is much more interesting in the game. The, the character at zero points here, who's fallen to zero, in in what my system that I'm currently will use the next time I play, uh, I'm, I'm currently not playing D&D &D right now, 
with anybody, but hopefully will be at some point. You're in a semi-conscious state. At, at zero, my rule is you're you're not going to die. You're going to be fine unless you roll like a one. You know, if you have to make a, a, a constitution saving throw, basically, is what I'm going to be doing. And you're fine. At negative three, now you could die or you could recover. Whether someone binds your wounds or not, whether someone casts cures on you or not, you could die, you could recover. Let me explain. In if if you're if you're no one binds your wounds and you've fallen and you're at negative three, in my game, you will die if you reach negative five. So at this point, the character has to make a constitution saving throw, and because they're at negative three, there is a minus three penalty to their saving throw. The base number they need is 12. They get to add their level. They get to add any modifiers they have, any constitution bonuses, whatever whatever things they have. But they're now at a minus three penalty. So they're not in a good shape, but they could make it. If they make it, they stabilize, but that doesn't mean they're not going to die. Stabilizing means you're, you're good for now. And your next saving throw, you'll have bonuses because you've stabilized, so you, you have a better chance of staying stable. I'm looking at this basically realistically. And I'm not saying you have to do it this way. I'm just giving you something to think about. So now what I'm saying is you are either at negative three or maybe you stabilized and moved up to negative two. The next time you have to, to make a check, which will be a little while since you've stabilized, as long as you continue to make your check, you will not lose points. The moment you fail that check, you start to slip back and you could still die. If someone now at negative seven, you're dead because negative five is death in my, in, my, in my game. If someone binds your wounds, that will automatically stabilize you and your chance to stay stable is increased. You have a, a much better chance of not dying, but you still could die. If someone casts cures on you, same thing. I'm not going to have cures really do anything other than stabilize you. And what, what that's the whole point of this is regardless of what system you use, if if I'm if the characters in are in battle, let's just say orcs, and I'm I'm the dungeon master. I'm if if these if these if any of those orcs knock any character to zero or less they're dead but if you use unconsciousness now you, those any of those orcs can defeat any of those characters in battle and they aren't dead now they they could have lost the battle but as long as all of the orcs die as long as the party wins the battle they don't have to worry about it. Obviously, if all the orcs win and all the players fall to negative one, negative two, they're all going to die unless the orcs just leave them there and just move on. They could they could recover. And but but the point of this is let's just say one or two characters in the party were knocked into negative hit points, zero or negative hit points. What this does is it it creates the scenario where now the, the party has to deal with their fallen comrades who aren't dead. So now they want to bind their wounds to help them stabilize, cast cure light wounds on them to help them stabilize, and hopefully get them revived. And then they have to rest. I, I do 24 hours because they're going to continue to cast cures or give them healing potions or whatever, magical healing, any anything. But the moment you, you add in negative hit points and unconsciousness into your game, you've added an element into the, the role play of this, which is a, a really, really good dynamic to your game. It's not, well, you're dead or you're, you're not dead. It's not, well, you're, you're unconscious, you're going to die or you're, you're bound now, you, you won't die. What, what, I'm, what I'm created is a little system for myself that's totally for the dungeon master to do. It doesn't have that doesn't concern the players, and I will let them know. Okay, you're at negative two. Make a con save. They fail their con save. Okay, you've fallen to negative three. They know if they if at negative four, you're at death's door. You're one away from dying. In this scenario, you can also have the party come up on onto 
characters who have been defeated in battle and laying on the ground, and the, the party can go over to them, and they might be conscious. Basically, negative hit points for me, you're in and out of consciousness. At any point, you could regain consciousness, but you could still bleed out and die, especially at negative four when you're at death's door. Many people, if you've seen scenes in movies, they're, they're conscious, they're talking, and then boom, they're, they, they die. They're at negative four. They failed their save. They died. Others stable. They make their they make their save and they stabilize and they don't die. This allows for more role playing in your game. This allows for interesting scenarios where you could run across an, a person lying unconscious in the road and the party could save them and that person could end up joining the party. It could be critical to the story. There's all kinds of things that this adds to your campaign that allows you to role play in a variety of ways. So in my opinion, if you if you haven't tried negative hit points and unconsciousness, you should. If you're playing 5th edition, the, the, the concept is there, but it's really not. You really should do something closer to this rule over here. But I would modify this to make it the way you like it. I don't I don't care for the Maybe it's realistic, uh, a coma, really, automatically, everybody goes into a coma. I just I thought that was weird. Uh, I think one week of rest is a little excessive, unless you have absolutely no means to heal them, then I, then I could say, yeah, you're going to need, you're, you're going to need one, a week of, of rest. I could see that if there's no healing, but there's healing in D&D, so why, why would that ever become an issue? Um but the, the whole point of this is th consider adding negative hit points and unconsciousness or states of where you're in and out of consciousness. Like I say, zero, you're conscious. If, for me, if you're at zero, you can crawl, like to get out of the way or to move out of the way or crawl under something. Y you can't, you can't fight anymore. You're, you're just, you're conscious, but you're, you're in very, very bad shape. You're at zero hit points and you could, pass out at any point. You have to make a save to avoid... It, I would say at zero, as long as they make their save, they, they remain conscious. They can move around on the ground very, very slowly. Something like that. It's, it's really good. This adds a wonderful element to the game, and I think you should try it. And uh, let me know what you all think. That's it. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.